assorted sex scene. Who's to blame? That's her. She's the one. <laughs> oh, no, this isn't about Blanche. And now that I'm associate producer of Wake Up Miami, I have to come up with topical show ideas for Sweeps Week. I need something that'll give us really big ratings. And I will have you know there is nothing sorted about my sex life. Nothing. <laughs> oh, great. Now I'm depressed. <laughs> You know what I hate about Sweeps Week? The news. It's sex, sex, sex. Why can't they do serious stories? Stories with political relevance. Yes, like sex in the new Russia is it worth standing in line for? <laughs> well, I've been working on a whole list of ideas that have nothing to do with sex, but they keep turning me down. Oh, like what? Well, things I think people would be interested in. Like... Who's in charge of cheese? <laughs> or Lincoln, great statesman or gas guzzler? Idiots in positions of power. <laughs> Good one. Pussycat, what short, wrinkly, and sticks out of my shoes? You. <laughs> no, my toes. It's that time of year. Mama needs a new pair of shoes. Well, you've crapped out. I am not taking you. Dorothy, please. The little piggy that goes wee, wee, wee doesn't have a nail on it anymore. <laughs> no way. Well, Dorothy's boring that. Now, shame on you. She is your mother. She's 85 years old and she wants a new pair of shoes. How many more chances do you think you're going to have to buy her shoes? Oh, what I would give to be able to buy my mother's shoes one more time. You want to take her? <laughs> Screw that. She's your mother. I'm sorry, Sophia. I know how you go on about shoes. Honey, we both know what's going to happen. I take you down to Shim Shacks, we walk in the door, and all the salesmen disappear. I have to go to the back of the store and bribe them to come out and help you. Please, those people love me. For $10, they love you. Without a tip, you're just another old lady wearing men's socks and a bad attitude. They love me. They hate you. The last time they gave me a balloon. You ripped that out of a kid's hand. You're just upset because I won't take the first thing they bring out. You don't take anything they bring out. I took you. <laughs> Look, Ma, you know what I'm talking about. You complain. You belittle. You know, Dorothy, I think maybe you're being too hard on her. I know how difficult buying shoes can be. Sometimes you get yourself a really good-looking salesman and... You try to pretend you don't notice his hands caressing your calf as he tries to keep his mind on shoes, but all the time he's thinking, dare I peek? <laughs> dare I look more? <laughs> dare I look where no eyes have looked before? <laughs> then as he kneels there before you, little beads of perspiration breaking out on his forehead, his breath coming shorter and quicker, he... Ever so gently slips the supple leather on your quivering foot. And you achieve a perfect fit. Come on, old woman, we need shoes now. Hello? Hello, Rose. Is Dorothy here? Oh, no. She went with Sophia to get shoes. She had taken Sophia for shoes. I know, but Dorothy decided to go when Sophia and Blanche started talking about whether or not Sophia should put on underwear. <laughs> they said it'd be fun to scare the hell out of the shoe set. Well, I gotta find Dorothy. I got big, big trouble at the apartment. What's wrong? When the people moved out of 3C, they left food all over. We were infested with big bugs. It's terrible. I, I feel like I'm living in a slum. Now I'll never get a woman to come over to my place. Not with these bugs. Okay, and this body. But mainly the bugs. Angelo, take me to your apartment. Bugs that make you hot? We got the big ones and the millions of them. No, but 
but I think it'd make a great story. Old people living under terrible conditions. Come on, we'll stop at the station and see if we can get a camera crew. I want the whole city to see what you've been going to. You mean I'm going to be on TV? You bet. Do I get to put on makeup? Well, sure. Oh, boy. I mean, uh, makeup, that's sissy stuff. <laughs> Thank God we're finished. I never want to go through that again. At least we got the shoes. And the balloon, and you didn't have to pay extra. I just had to swear that I would never take you back again. Shimshak makes you swear that every year. In blood? <laughs> Sophia, there's something I don't understand. Now, you're always a bit ornery, unpleasant, impolite, even downright mean. That's part of your charm. Thank you, you bed-hopping relic. I'm trying to make is your behavior in this shoe thing is extreme even for you what is going on well Dorothy always makes me buy the same old lady shoes I never get anything new and exciting it's just another reminder of what old age takes away from you first husbands then cute shoes what's old age going to take away from me next <laughs> hey where's my balloon Ma, you wear those shoes because they're the only shoes you say you can wear. Whenever we get you other shoes, you say they're uncomfortable. I'm cursed with these square feet. When I was a girl in Sicily, we'd be too poor for shoes, so I wore olive oil cans. <laughs> Look, Ma, I don't want to be the one to keep you from being happy. If you really want new shoes, I'll take you. Turn on the news. What's going on? Oh, today is my lucky day. While you were gone, Angelo came over to tell you about these big bugs at his place. Well, he didn't want to make a big deal of it. He said he could try to pass them off as shellfish and sell them out of the back of his trunk. <laughs> well, I thought it was a great story, and so did my boss. In fact, he's putting it on tonight's news. Rose, please tell me you're kidding. My boss said he wanted to expose Angelo's landlord for making him live under those terrible conditions. But Angelo wouldn't give us his name. I said, see, you never squeals, never. Did you offer him money? <laughs> no, never he wouldn't. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. I mean, our research department will find that heartless Shylock. And if they don't, I will. I'm not going to rest, I'm not going to sleep, I'm not going to eat until I track that scum down. Rose. I'm the scum. <laughs> Stan and I inherited that building. I am Uncle Angelo's landlord. Oh, Dorothy, I forgot. <laughs> oh, I feel awful. Just awful. How could I have been so stupid? No, it's okay. I missed the family angle. <laughs> He's your uncle. Niece makes uncle live in Roach Motel. <laughs> Look, there's Angelo. Turn the sound up, quick. As you can see, the bugs are really big, and when I spray them, they appear to be laughing at us. <laughs> the question all Miami is asking is, who would make people live under these conditions? We have learned this vermin-infested squalor is owned by baked potato opener king Stanley Spornak and his ex-wife, Dorothy Spornak. <laughs> Dorothy, that's your picture. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, look, they put those little wiggly antennas on our heads. What am I going to do? How am I going to face people? I told Stan I didn't want that building. I didn't care about it. I don't care about it now. He's supposed to take care of all the maintenance. You better get this straightened out, Rose. Dorothy Zbornak? Yeah, I'm Dorothy Zbornak. I have a warrant for your arrest. I'll have to ask you to come with me. What for? Violation of the city's housing codes. Lady, you're a slumlord. Dorothy, don't worry. We'll have you out of jail in no time. I'll get the best attorney Social Security can buy. <laughs> My God, Dorothy, did you see all the reporters out there? I oh, know. It's becoming a media circus. And they really hate you, the big bug lady they call you. <laughs> you deserve a better nickname. I don't know, something like 
big, mean landlady or big, mean Darcy. Something with big, mean. <laughs> Darcy, I am so excited. I just got interviewed. They asked me if you were clean at home. I said, well, you won't find any crumbs in her bed. You won't find anything in her bed. <laughs> Dorothy, Dorothy, how did this happen? I feel so terrible. Oh, it's not your fault. Oh, thank you. I'm proud of you, Angelo. You didn't squeal. Yeah, hey, I'm a Sicilian. Nobody made an offer, huh? Not a dime. <laughs> Dorothy, isn't there something? You've become what we in the news business call a hot story. Yeah, and you've become what we call in the revenge business next. <laughs> Why, no wonder they call you the big me and the bug lady. Do you believe the mob out there? Where's Marvin? Who? Your lawyer, Marvin Mitchelson. Where is he? No, I'm not using Marvin on this case. He's a brilliant lawyer. Listen, Stanley, we need help here. You know, last night, after Marvin got us bailed out, I went to a bar up the street, and while I was there, it dawned on me. If we use Mitchelson, we're going to look like the rich slumlords we're not. Well, then who are we using? Well, as luck would have it, I met somebody at the bar who doesn't have that much experience, but I was very impressed. Huh? <laughs> Boy, Stan, it's jumping out there. Is this what impressed you? Believe me, Dorothy, she's very bright. Really? I'm telling you, we were the only two in the bar who got the jokes on the cocktail napkins. <laughs> Dorothy, I want you to meet our attorney, Tracy. Tracy, this is Dorothy. Hi-de-ho! Hi-de-ho. <laughs> Stanley, forgive me, but I don't think I'm willing to trust my future to this girl, knowing her only qualification is that you were able to pick her up in a bar. I did not pick her up. Struck out? Boy, do you know me or what? <laughs> this kind of thinking is really quite sexist. Just because a woman is attractive and is not uncomfortable about her sexuality does not mean she can't be bright, well-informed, and a hell of a lawyer. Thank you. Uh, where did you go to uh, law school? A whole bunch of places. Uh-oh. What? The assistant D.A. Peterson. He's a killer. It's amazing what he does to the witnesses. You think he's getting nowhere, and then suddenly he gives the witness a really dumb compliment, and for some reason it works. They let down their guard, and he nails them. Well, you must have some way of combating that. Well, we'll find out. What do you mean? I've never really done this before. <laughs> and so you're saying that you never really complained about the bugs to this born axe. Is that right? Yes. You're very bright. She's very bright. <laughs> Your witness. Angelo, isn't it true that the Zaborn Acts make you live under deplorable conditions? No. And isn't it true that from time to time they shut off the power to the entire building just for funsies? No. And isn't it true that... Excuse me, but that's the nicest tie I've ever seen. Thanks. Didn't you tell Rose and Island you were living in a slum? Sure, but... No further was... question. <laughs> Isn't it true, Mrs. Devereaux, that Mrs. Zabornak is the kind of person who likes to see people suffer? No. And isn't it true that from time to time she bullies the women she lives with? No. For the record, Your Honor, this witness has the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. Blanche. What did Dorothy really feel about Angelo's building? She said she didn't care about it, that she never cared about it. Thank you. Thank you. In your own words, Mrs. Petrillo, the words of a beautiful, dignified person who's got a wild bod for a chick her age. <laughs> what kind of person is your daughter? She put me in a home. <laughs> All right, quiet down. Order in the courtroom. Do you have any more witnesses, Mr. Peterson? No, Your Honor. New robe? No, why? Looks great. Thank you, Counselor. <laughs> Well, if there are no more witnesses... Uh, I... Your Honor, may I say something? You may speak. 
Uh, Your Honor, this is all a very simple mistake. Stan and I are ready to get an exterminator to take care of those bugs. I don't know how this thing got so far, but believe me, we are not criminals. I want you both to get an idea of what it's like for all the people that you collect rent from. So I'm going to sentence both of you to live in apartment 3C in this building until such time as it is brought up to code. Wait a minute, you, you want me to live with him in the same apartment? That's right. But there are bugs there. <laughs> and they'll think Stan is their leader. <laughs> All right, in you go. Oh, isn't this lovely? <laughs> Look, they're putting a bunk bed and a chair. Oh, Look, Dorothy, a chair. This isn't going to be so bad. This isn't going to be bad at all. Yeah, well, I suppose. Oh, Blanche, can we get out of here? It's starting to get dark. You know, Dorothy, in some ways we're lucky. How many people get locked up with someone they were attracted to? I don't know. The name Marion Barry comes to mind. Good luck, Dorothy. I'll miss you. I love you. Uh, someday, sweetheart. I'm going to get out of this hellhole. And I'm going to come looking for you. <laughs> don't spend all your time in prison hating me, Dorothy. Learn a trade. <laughs> Dorothy. Tonight, I'm going to be out front in a laundry truck. Gotcha. So? If you hear screaming, don't call the cops. <laughs> okay, let's go, ladies. Don't worry, pussycat. We won't rest till we get you out of here. Thanks, Mom. Who wants Chinese? I got her credit card. I got her credit card. <laughs> I asked you not to do that. I know, but I'm going stir crazy. There's no way out. No way out. Stanley, they let you keep your belt and shoelaces. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> you know, in a way, this apartment reminds me of our first place. Do you remember the first night we spent there? Yes. And as I recall, I was trying to read then, too. <laughs> You're still mad at me, aren't you? Yes, I'm mad at you. Every time you come into my life, something bad happens. Oh, you're right. You're right. You know, I wish we could go back to the beginning, try again, go back to that first apartment. We didn't have much, but we were happy to have our own place. Those were good times. <laughs> you had gotten your first job. Yeah, back then, you could give blood every week. <laughs> Remember the time your mother took care of the baby? It was our first time alone in a year. You bought me wine and... Flowers, I remember. Remember how much fun we had in that apartment that night? I remember. You know, Dorothy, the two of us could get into that bottom bunk and have some fun again. What do you say? For old time's sake? I, I don't know. Oh, okay, but let's do it right. Let's say you run down and, and buy some good wine and some flowers. Mm, you bet. <laughs> Mama. My God, did you bust out? No. Don't worry. I know what to do. We'll get your phony license and birth certificate. And have a good plastic surgeon by tomorrow morning. You can be Raul Julia. <laughs> no, I didn't bust out. The exterminator came this morning and the building inspector said we could leave. So, it's over. You don't sound very happy. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm a little confused. About what? About Stan. Oh, geez, you didn't shack up with him again. <laughs> I didn't shack up with him. He asked and I said no, but I'll tell you, for a few minutes there, I was thinking of going to bed with him. You know who I think about going to bed with? I don't want to know. <laughs> no, really. Believe me, I don't want to know. <laughs> okay, fine. But I am confused. I mean, just when I think I'm over the man, something happens. Am I ever going to stop having feelings for him? 
Luther Vandross. Ooh, baby. Fine, you're not interested. Of course I'm interested. See what I have on my feet? Your regular old shoes. And do you know why? Because old lady shoes are me. Like it or not, they're a part of my life. It's like it is with you and Stan. You understand what I'm saying? You're saying that in some ways, Stan belongs in my life. And like your shoes, he may not be stylish, but he's, he's familiar. He's comfortable. And shiny on top. Don't forget shiny on top. <laughs> and I guess that's not so bad. There you go. Ah, you know, Ma, you pick your spots, but in some ways you're very wise. You're not just my mother. You're my best friend. Good night, Ma. Good night, Pussycat. What are you doing? Watching amazing discoveries. Look at that. The thing just shucks the corn off the cob. <laughs> just shucks it off. I cannot watch you spend one more night like this. You're coming with me to the rest of the anchor. Uh, Blanche, I told you, I am so uncomfortable with strangers. Now, now, don't blame yourself. They're just as uncomfortable with you. <laughs> it all stems from your low self-esteem. What are you talking about? Dorothy, if you felt better about yourself, you'd want to get out and do more. I have a little exercise I do whenever my self-esteem's kind of low. I say my name, and then I list three positive things about myself. I'm Blanche Devereaux, I'm beautiful, men find me desirable, and people want to be my friend. Go on, now you try. Oh, Blanche. Oh, please, please. I'm Dorothy's Bornack, I'm beautiful, men find me desirable, and people want to be my friend. seen you here before? I usually don't come to places like this. <laughs> well, I can understand. A lot of people feel uncomfortable in a bar. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Hey, you don't happen to sing, do you? What makes you think that I, I sing? I would even want to. I mean, you know, some people might enjoy making fools of themselves in public, but uh, me saying I, I don't think so. You sing, don't you? A little. <laughs> Great. Um, how about some Irving Berlin? Blue skies, always. Uh, maybe, maybe some other time. What'll I do? D flat is good for me. <laughs> What'll I do if you? Away, and I am blue. What'll I do? Very nice. What'll I do when I am wondering who is kissing you? What'll I do? Very good. What'll I do with just a photograph? To tell my troubles to When I'm alone With only dreams That won't come true What'll I do? 
What'll I do with just a photograph to tell my troubles to when I'm alone with only dreams of you that won't come true? What'll I do? Friends, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not wearing a bra. <laughs> Oh, Blanche, honey, I just wanted to thank you again for last night. Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. You still haven't said anything about my performance. Well, you mean that little ditty you croaked out? I thought it was cute. <laughs> Dorothy, how would you like to go to a wake next Friday? Ma, you know how I feel about those things. They're so sad and depressing. Whose wake is it anyway? Mine. What time? <laughs> She's serious. Next Friday, Sophia's going to throw her own wake. Food, drinks, music. The only difference will be she'll be alive. God willing. <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? At Doug's wake, people got up and said wonderful things about him. But he wasn't there to hear it. I don't want that to happen to me. I want to hear how people feel about me. I want to be there to listen as they salute my, my grace, my wit, my inner beauty. Ma, writers cost money. <laughs> now, this whole idea is twisted. Come on, you're going to be around for years. No reason for anybody to say goodbye to you. Dorothy, I want this. There's nothing you can do to stop me. Nothing you can say will prevent me from having the wake of my dreams. Well, I'm not paying for it. Okay, a kitten. Can I have a kitten? <laughs> Sophia, I'll be happy to pay for your wake. I love you. Well, me too. Well, fine. Fine. Do what you want. Just don't expect me to be a part of it. I even know a way we can save some money. I'll make the hors d'oeuvres. Some wake. <laughs> Scandinavian crap on a cracker. <laughs> I mean, thank you. Flash, 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 flash
I couldn't help but notice you took several of my tasty, delicious Lutefisk puffs, and you've hardly touched them. Uh, I just don't care for them. <laughs> yeah, well, that's an ugly hat. <laughs> Nobody's having a good time. It's supposed to be a party. Well, maybe when Sophia makes her entrance, it'll perk things up. Oh, everybody, here's Myrtle. Oh, Myrtle, thank goodness you got here. You're just the person we need to liven up this party. Do some of those impressions you're so good at. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> Jimmy Swaggart, right? <laughs> Wonderful. Do another one. The last time I saw her, she was fine. <laughs> I didn't even know she was sick. What happened? Wait, don't tell me. Ah, uh, Klaus von Bülow? <laughs> I'm talking about Sophia. How did she die? What do you mean, how did she... Excuse me. <laughs> Rose? Listen, I want you to think now very carefully. When you sent out those invitations, you did remember to tell everyone Sophia's really alive, didn't you? Blanche, I'm offended. I mean, how dumb do you think I am? I put it... I need the freaking hors d'oeuvres. Leave me alone. You idiot. Everybody thinks she's dead now. Well, we're going to have to tell them the truth before she comes. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming to my wake. What do you think of the dress? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Well, excuse me for buying off the rack. <laughs> Sophie, is it really you? You're supposed to be dead. Hold that thought. Rose, you forgot to tell these people I was alive, didn't you? And I made the freaking punch and I made the freaking decorations. <laughs> what is this? Some kind of sick joke? <laughs> All right, everybody, now just stop. Okay, so there's been a little misunderstanding, but the point is you're all here, and you were invited to, to celebrate Sophia's life and, and the wonderful times you've shared. And, and the good news is that Sophia's still with us, so now you have the chance to tell her how you really feel about her. I'll go first. <laughs> Sophia, I drove 30 miles and missed a day of work just to be here. I think it's very selfish of you not to be dead. <laughs> and I missed... Well, actually, I didn't have anything planned for today. But I'm still P.O.'d. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Sophia. But you know, the important thing is they all came. And, and when they thought you were dead, they were real sad. Now, that counts for something. Well, I guess you're right. But I still wish my wake hadn't been such a disaster. Well, look on the bright side. You'll have another one. <laughs> Dorothy! Hi, everybody! Hi, Dorothy. Hey, Dorothy, what's your pleasure? Claude Aikens on a waterbed. <laughs> <laughs> Until then, a beer will have to do. <laughs> hey, guys, what about me? Blanche! Well, that's more like it. Shut the door. <laughs> see? What did I tell you? That's why I wanted you to come down and see for yourself. Look at that. The men are practically swarming all over her, just like she was somebody. I just have to keep reminding myself, I am Blanche Devereaux. I am beautiful. Men find me desirable. And my life is over. Boy, when the mask falls off, it really makes a fuss. <laughs> come on, go and sing some for us. Huh? Come on, sing some for us. Something wrong, Sophia? I don't believe it. My Dorothy is popular. After 60 years of bargaining with God, it's finally happened. <laughs> per our agreement, I'm off to Calcutta to work with the poor. <laughs> well, I, for one, have had it with Miss Dorothy's Bornack. I'm going to get this bar's attention if it's the last thing I do. Hey, fellas, what's going on? Oh, yeah, hi, Blanche, sit down. Dorothy's about to sing for us. <laughs> Did it ever occur to any of you that maybe I'd like to sing? <laughs> Come on, Blanche. You've been coming here seven years. The only thing I've ever seen you do on that piano. Hey, 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 hey there's a lady present. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody, may I have your attention, please? Two can play this game, you know. Boys, I have a little surprise for you. Yeah, yeah, we know. You're not wearing a bra. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. 
I'm gonna say. <laughs> Would you please? Thank you. For all my special friends here at the Rusty Anchor, this one's for you. Hit it, Ron. I wanna be loved by you, just you, and nobody else but you. I wanna be loved by you, alone. But if I was by you, just you, and nobody else but you, I wanna be kissed. I want to be loved by you, just you, nobody else but you. I want to be loved by you, alone, but you. Oh, hi, handsome, what's your name? His name's Don, and he just had hip surgery. <laughs> Look, Blanche, the rusty anchor is not worth risking our friendship over. If you want me to stop coming here, just say so. I want you to stop coming here. <laughs> like hell I will. Then what are we going to do? Why don't we share? Let's just be sure that we both don't show up on the same night. You mean like I would come three nights a week and you come three? Right. Well, wait a minute. What about Sunday? Oh, you don't want to come on a Sunday, Doctor. The men have been watching football all day long. They're drunk and rowdy. Yeah, you want Sundays, Please. don't you? <laughs> it's a deal. Oh, Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy, are you ever jealous of me? Every day of my life. Blanche, why don't we go out there and do a duet? Do you know Crimea River? Oh, no, I don't. Good. We'll do
say proudly that I love you and your love is great. You are such an amazing man. I have seen love before, but I never felt that great before. I can say proudly that I love you and your love is great. You are such an Such an amazing man I have seen love before But I never felt that great before I can say proudly That I love you and your love is great you are such an amazing man I have seen love before But I never felt that great before I can say proudly That I love you and your love is great You are such an amazing man You have Such an amazing man You have awakened a part of me You have created something I've never knew You not only care about me But you only respect me as I am Sir